Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who play them. And now, here's your host, the war game expert, Marco Arnaudo. Today I want to talk about Coral Sea, a game published in Spain by Bellica, third generation. Uh, it is the second game in the campaign commander system. Uh, clearly it is about World War II, about the Pacific Theater of Operations. Now, it is a game and the campaign commander series that I do not know how famous they are outside of Spain or Europe. I haven't seen any reviews or videos by American reviewers or people living in the US. Uh, Multiman Publishing distributes them in the US, but the page for Bellica's third generation on the website looks particularly unattractive. There are no images, you don't really get a sense of the games. So um, I like this game and I like the campaign commander system. So all the most reason for me to try to give you a sense of how the game works, what is pretty unique about this system, and I hope that this will help you maybe decide to give a try to a game that you might not have heard much about. So, Coral Sea, Belly of the Generation, let's take a look. Each player has a deck of cards that have different effects to different things and according to the color on the border they can be played in different times during the game and in a way partially it seems it's a card driven game but not entirely. Uh, also another concept is initiative each game in the series has a player with the initiative at the beginning. Here is the Japanese player that starts with initiative in every turn until the LA player meets certain conditions, then the LA player retains initiative for uh, the rest of the game. Why am I explaining these two things now? Well, they are in order to explain to you how a turn works because it's very interesting. It's a non-linear, non-standard way. Turns might go in different ways, not I go, you go. Each player has one of these two cheats that have cards on one side and a map on the other side. Now, the way it works is the beginning of each turn, they will secretly select their one of the two sides and then they will show it to each other at the same time. Suppose they both chose cards, then the player with the initiative does something with the cards and then the other player does. Does something means you can play a card for effect, resolve the effect written on the card, you can discard it and get a resource, I'll explain later what those resources are, or you can draw a new one. It's not like, you know, play and draw, you can do one of those, so it may take you a while to replenish your hand. And then the non-initiating player does the same. In case one played the map and won the cards, the player with the map, whoever that is, goes first and executes an operation on the map. It's just doing things on the map. Moving units, attacking, refitting units. You do some onboard operations. And then the player with the cards will play a card, discard, or draw a new one. What is really interesting and tricky is when both players play the map. In that case, they have to roll a die each, and the initiative player gets a bonus of plus two and wins ties. Then the person that has the highest number or the initiative player winning the tie uh, will execute his operation on the board. And if they're thinking, well, then the other person does it next, it's not the other person does nothing there can only be only there can only be one operation on board each turn so if you think that your enemy is, is going to prepare an operation and you're doing the same you know you're taking a chance so there is a lack factor there you might be stuck and your enemy might be able to do several turns several operations where you're just looking and but at the same time you know you have a way of trying to tell when is he going to do an operation well if it is at least i'm going to do something with my cards or i think he is done with the operations then now is the right time to do mine because i think he'll play cards very interesting challenge there when you're trying to read the intentions of your opponents and of course to take advantage from those To conduct onboard operations, you spend resources. You have to spend one resource per operation. The resources are represented by these 
markers. Now, it's very important that when you declare when your operation is, you spend the resource point, and then you place a marker in the area where you spend the point and where the operation originates. It is very important because in this game, resources are physically bound to the place where you play them. In fact, an operation, the resource will have effect in the naval area where it is played, and up to three ground um, areas starting from there. So again, if you play a resource there, this is the operation, then I can activate all of these ships and I can activate this guy because it is in, in range. Uh, each time I spend a resource, that gives me six supply points. And here I have a track that helps me remember, oh, I spent two points moving naval units, then a point refitting a ship, then two points doing something else so that I just remember how many I have left. So for example, in this case, I can spend a point to move this guy here. I can spend this guy is depleted, so I spend another point refitting them. I spend two points to move this stack of naval units and infantry and some resources, for example, and they can move four. So one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. There we go or four and it seems easy but then the tricky thing is that remember you need to have a resource in the areas where you do something so that was the case for example I reached that area I can you know I can disembark that guy take control of San Cristobal I feel very powerful next turn I spend this resource so I can activate those naval units and I can go around and do stuff mm, not Maybe that's not such a good idea. Suppose I just keep exploring and doing things here, and this is the end of my turn. Then these people are stranded in the middle of the ocean. There is nothing that they can do because you can do something with your units only if there is a resource there. So, in that case, I need as soon as possible to have a convoy coming from Australia bringing them some resources and actually hoping that the convoy has enough that they don't get stranded on the way. So I need to put together ships and put together resources so that in the end there will be resources there and somebody will be able to spend the resource there, then everybody can move. And it's easier said than done. It will take you a while. Don't worry, you will have units stuck around or even when you're good at this, you still have to leave units unguarded here and there just because you do not have resources enough to move everybody every time that you would want to. And how you do this, how you handle those resources, it's extremely interesting. Also, you can attack the enemy's convoys that are transporting resources, so that can be particularly dangerous and you have to protect your own convoys. This is a game that has really good logistical depth. Combat is another element which is handled originally in this game. When uh, units of the two opponents are in the same area, a battle immediately ensues. And what they do is that each player has a pool of battle sheets with little illustrations. And they will draw a number of battle sheets equal to the highest tactical value in their group. The tactical value is this number here on the top right corner. So for example, the highest tactical value in this group is true, then the LA player will draw two battle sheets and look at them secretly. Um, the Japanese player, the highest tactical value, I don't know if you can see very well, is a three, so the Japanese player will be able to play to draw three cheats and they look at them secretly. Now, as you can see, these have different illustrations because these battle cheats do different things. And then starting with the aggressor, one of the player, the aggressor will play a cheat. For example, this one. The Japanese player plays this one, which is an airstrike and will force the American player to roll a die to see if one of his ships is damaged or not that is played, then it is time for the LA player to play one which has a specific effect on one of those ships, you roll a die. So what is interesting is that this, you don't have one, you know, standard attack. 
these cheats they have similar mechanisms so it's not like you have to remember a lot of rules on how they work and also you have a very clear player aid that helps you rem remember which, which one does what but they do work differently not only do they work differently you know inside an army like gunner is different from torpedo but sometimes the same cheat works differently from the two for the two uh, sides meaning that the two sides do play differently night battle for example this one um, for the Japanese is very violent it can inflict a lot of damage on the Allies but also the Japanese expose themselves doing that and they can get damage too during the battle whereas when it is the ally playing the night battle it can inflict less damage but also does not receive any so it just shows that they are a little more cautious in their, in their way of fighting. Very often when you play a new war game you have the sense that you can tell where the game comes from and what are the adjustments that have been made. Like, oh, this game feels like a little bit like Tide of Iron, but just you have the headquarters. Oh, this game looks like Conflict of Heroes, but you have that other thing. With Coral Sea and with this series in general, I don't have that sense. I really have the sense that I'm playing something really innovative, really new. The non-standard turn that you don't know who's going first, actually if you're going to play at all, your onboard operation is very interesting. There's going to be a lot of bluffing and, and mind reading, or trying to mind read of course. Um, the car system, that's maybe the thing that will remind you, oh it feels like a car driven. It is a car driven game in a way, but also many turns where you do not use cards, you only use resources. So actually it is hybrid between car driven and not car driven. Uh, the combat system is real fun, it's really interesting. Occasionally you will have the battle that drags on a little too long. Large battles, you keep drawing chits and you keep rolling and if people don't get hit, it goes on for a while. But it doesn't happen often, the majority of battles are very interesting, are very fast. You have the tactical advantage you can exploit and make things interesting. And again, it is a hybrid between the put chilling, the chip pulling mechanism, and other things. Um, put all these things together, it is an experience that you might like it or not. I do. If you don't, well, I can tell you in advance, but you will have the sense that you try something really different. Per se, this game, it's really interesting if you like games that emphasize resources, this is one for you. Like all games that emphasize resources and supplies, of course, you might have an odd flow. You might have periods where the players are building up their strength and then they launch massive operations and then they get stranded in the middle of nowhere and so for a couple of turns then they have to rebuild. But here, it's harder because then not only do you have to do that, but then you also have to deliver your resources there, which consumes resources. So take into account you might have a couple of games just to learn how the resource system really works. It sounds easy on paper, it sounds easy when I tell you, but everybody I taught this game to at the beginning, well we had to restart the game almost immediately because it was very really hard, much harder than it looks like. And it is fun, it is a challenging system, it's when I was playing it, one a friend of mine told me by playing this game I understand why beginner commanders talk about strategy and experienced commander talks about logistics. This is a game where you will learn your logistics or you will lose and be in pain. So it's a fun game, it's a great game, I really recommend it.